How to Prevent Heel Lift in Hiking Boots If you find yourself always getting painful blisters on the backs of your heels when you hike in boots, there are several things you can do to try to minimize or eliminate that issue. Heel blisters are usually caused by heel lift, where your heel lifts up, even slightly, from the sole, creating friction against the stiff back of the boot. This tends to happen when you climb up a hill. Part 1 Finding the Right Boots 1. Consider trail runners. The right boots might not be boots at all. Many people who've suffered through heel blisters have found sweet relief by hiking in lighter shoes that don't wrap around the ankle. The common reaction to this suggestion is but I need the ankle support. Consider that maybe, with the right conditioning, you can strengthen your ankles and feet, and do not need heavy boots. If you'd rather wear boots, however. 2. Get to know the dimensions of your feet. There's a lot more to your feet than the size, and normally the other stuff doesn't matter, but when you're racking up miles upon miles walking on uneven terrain, it becomes painfully obvious when your footwear does not conform to your unique foot. If you go to a good shoe store, you can get your feet measured accurately for all of the following. How wide are your feet? Width comes into play around the balls of your feet. If your boots are too narrow, you've probably suffered the dreaded black pinky toenail. How narrow is your heel? Many people who get heel blisters have narrow heels, and this contributes to heel lift because the heel area of the boot is too big to snugly hold the heel in place. Do you have a low, medium, or high volume foot? In rough terms, this describes how bulky or skinny your feet are. Two people can have the same exact shoe size and width and still have a totally different fit in the same pair of boots. If you tend to get irritation or blisters on the top of your foot, rubbing up against the tongue of a shoe, you probably have high volume feet. Having low volume feet can contribute to heel blisters because your foot will slide up into the extra room in your boot and let your heel lift from the sole. Note that each factor can vary from one of your feet to the other. It's not uncommon for people to have feet in two different sizes. 3. Research brands and models that favor your foot type. Some manufacturers tend to favor boots that fit certain criteria. La Sportiva boots are reputed to have a good fit for people with narrow, low, volume feet. Basque and Asolo boots tend to run narrow. Search the web for the specifics of your feet, such as Hiking boot brands narrow heel wide toes. Best hiking boots low volume feet. Finding hiking boots narrow feet heels. 4. Buy boots from a store with a flexible return policy. The REI store chain is best known for its generous return policy, you can buy boots, try them out on several hikes, and if they are not a good fit, you can return them within a year of the purchase date. 5. Get the right size. You might think sizing is pretty straightforward, but it's not. People are at least twice as likely to buy shoes that are too small rather than too big. Feet swell throughout the day, and more so during a hike. Try on shoes at night. Bring the hiking socks that you actually wear when you go hiking. Wear them as you try on shoes. 6. Break in your hiking boots. Don't get too ambitious and go on a 15-mile, 24-kilometers, hike with your new boots. Give them a chance to conform to your feet, and give your feet a chance to conform to the boots. Be patient and hike in small increments, gradually increasing distance and elevation gain, for the first 15 to 30 miles, 24 to 48 kilometers, you spend in your new boots. Part 2 Use Lacing Techniques 1. Use a surgeon's knot to isolate the lacing tension in various parts of your shoes. For example, if you want to keep the toe box loose and wide but you want to tighten the boot around your ankle, you would lace loosely around the top of your foot, use a surgeon's knot, then lace more tightly the rest of the way. To make a surgeon's knot, cross the laces. Bring one lace over and under the bridge you just created. This is the simple knot everyone makes when tying their shoes. Bring that same lace over and under the bridge again. This extra loop creates extra friction that locks in the tension. Tighten by pulling the laces apart. 2. Use the heel lock technique to, well, lock your heel down. Lace your shoes normally through the lacing holes. Stop before you get to the hooks, there are usually two on each side of a hiking boot, at the ankle portion. Instead of diagonally crossing the laces, have them go straight up to the hooks. From the hooks, cross the laces and bring them underneath the section that went straight from the lacing hole to the lacing hook. Bring the laces back together and tie them tightly. 
Pull and you will feel the pulley system you just created locking your heel into place. Part 3 Additional Tips and Tricks 1. Look for insoles that will help low-volume feet fill out the boots so that your heel doesn't lift. Many people have reported success in addressing heel blisters with super feet insoles, the green version. 2. Buy or make a tongue depressor. This is a piece of foam that goes either between your foot and the tongue of your boot, or between the tongue and the laces, to fill out the extra space if you have low volume feet which push up into the tongue area, and let the heel come up, as you climb. 3. Employ the tried and true blister prevention strategies. Apply an anti-chafing substance to the areas that are prone to blisters before putting on your socks. Wear a liner sock under your hiking socks to wick moisture away and provide a barrier for friction. Useful hiking socks, which manage moisture better instead of holding it in like cotton socks do. Apply duct tape, moleskin, or look a tape on hot spots as soon as you feel them forming. 4. When you take breaks from hiking, take off your shoes and let your feet breathe. Better yet, switch out your socks for something drier.